All right, so first things first, this is the type of wheel bearing that we're gonna be changing out in this video. This is a press-in style wheel bearing. They're super common. Um, there's a bunch of different cars out there that use these so much so that I couldn't begin to tell you the number of cars or the all the makes and models of cars that use this bearing. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you guys how to change out this bearing um, without a shot press. So what we're gonna do is I have a special tool that we're gonna use to be able to change this out basically on the car. Now, in addition to the bearing, there are some other things that you may or may not need, uh, depending on your situation, to change this bearing. So first of all, new snap ring. Um, up in the rust belt where I live, I just get a new snap ring just in case. Um, it's just a lot easier than trying to fight with the old one, especially if you get it all twisted up, you know, pulling it out of there. Um, next thing is, is gonna be possibly a new hub. Um, they're relatively inexpensive depending on the car you're working on. Um, I think this one was like between $10 and $15. They're stupid cheap. Um, we'll get into this later on in the video, but most of the time you could get away without buying this. Um, it really depends on the tools that you have and the situation that you're in. So these are the you know special tools, if you will, that we're going to be using in this video. Um, this up here is a wheel bearing press kit. This one's made by Astro. Uh, down here I have a slide hammer and finally over here is going to be a hub puller to attach to the slide hammer. Now um, I'll put links in the description to all this stuff. The other thing you guys can do is um, if you guys have a local auto parts store they may be able to willing to rent you this stuff if you guys want to go that route. But at any rate uh, beyond this most applications is just going to take common hand tools other than you know the stuff that I'm showing you here. So as you can imagine with a job like this, step one is going to be jack the car up and remove the wheel. So now that we have the wheel taken off, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the caliper bracket bolts, so one up here, one down here, pull a caliper in the bracket and just set it up off to the side. So once you get the caliper and the bracket free, hang it off to the side, uh, use a zip tie or a hanger or something like that. Just get it up out of the way. Don't let it hang by the hose. Um, and the next thing you need to do is remove the rotor. Um, this being a Honda, I have rotor screws that I have to deal with, but do what you need to do to get the caliper and the rotor removed. So as you guys can see, I've got the brakes all taken off, axle nut has been removed, and I'm at sort of a junction here. Now there's a couple different ways you can go about doing what I'm, what I'm going to show you and it depends on the kind of car you're, you're dealing with. So let me show, first, let me show you the issue. So the CV shaft doesn't go in toward the center of the car far enough for it to come out of the knuckle. Therefore, I need to take the knuckle and either fold it down, fold the bottom up, um, do something to get this CV shaft all the way out of the knuckle. Now, the reason I say this is, is you take this bolt loose and this bolt loose on some vehicles that can be an alignment setting. So if you take these bolts out on some cars, you may have issues with your alignment when you're done. Um, your other option is remove the lower ball joint. Um, that's not gonna give you quite as much flexibility as removing these two bolts. Um, but like I said, it depends on the vehicle you're dealing with and you have to be 100% certain that these bolts up here are not alignment bolts. Um, alignment bolts are what's called eccentric. Um, I'll put some pictures on the screen of what eccentric bolts look like, but uh, you guys you know, really have to know what you own if you're, uh, if you're gonna attempt to do this. What I'm gonna do on this car, these bolts are not eccentric. These are just standard hard, this is just standard hardware in the knuckle of this car. So this bolt's coming out, this bolt's coming out. I'm gonna tilt the knuckle down and that'll give me enough space to pop the axle out of the hub. So if you guys are dealing with eccentric hardware on your vehicle and you wanna take out these strut bolts like I am in this video, my best suggestion for you guys is to use like a paint marker or a Sharpie or something you're gonna be able to see Mark the washer, mark the head of the bolt, and mark the strut. Align it in those three places, on the head of the bolt and on the nut side. Put marks with both pieces of hardware, and then when you put it back together, align all of your marks, and the car is still gonna be in alignment. Next step is gonna be get the hub puller. Put the hub puller on the studs. Get a couple lug nuts 
or you know two or three or however many that you need and put put a couple lug nuts on here and just snug them up you don't need them you know super tight but you need them ran all the way down onto the threads so So, got the hub puller on here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna thread the slide hammer into the hub puller. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is I also put the two bolts back in uh, the knuckle. So, we've got a nice, you know, stable place to work. So this knuckle's just not just flopping all over the place while I'm trying to work on this. So, Take the slide hammer, thread the slide hammer in. Just make sure the make sure the threads of the slide hammer are poking through the other side, so you know you got you know all the threads engaged. Snug up the jam nut, and then uh, we'll start beating on this thing. We'll pull this hub out. Take some time. So that's what you want. Obviously, some of these come out a little bit harder than others. Um, just, you know, again, depends on what you're dealing with. So this one wasn't too terribly bad. I know I've had people tell me that um, you know, doing this is I'm, I'm damaging the ball joints and I'm damaging the tie rod ends and this, that, and the other. I'm a 140 pound individual swinging a five pound slide hammer. The car weighs 2,800 pounds. What happens when it hits a pothole at 70? You're not gonna damage any of this stuff by using a slide hammer on it. So you can use a slide hammer. Um, if you're gonna replace the hub, the other thing you can do as I've seen people, you know, pound one of the studs out, thread a nut and a bolt in here, and just use that as a jack bolt to basically just, you know, push the, the hub off the knuckle itself. Um, another thing you could do, air chisel. Um, if you got an air chisel with a flat bit on it, yeah, you could probably get it back there and, you know, pound it off. You're gonna bend up the, you're gonna bend up the hub doing that. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna have to replace the hub. There's no, there's no way around it, but, um, Using a slide hammer, if you get this inner race off of here, we'll be able to reuse this hub. The next piece that we're gonna have to deal with here is gonna be this snap ring. Um, as you can see, this car's pretty rusty. It's lived up north its entire life. Um, you're not just gonna take a pair of snap ring pliers, stick them in the holes, squeeze it, and you know get that out of the groove. It's just not gonna happen. So what you're gonna have to do is come around the, the edge of the snap ring with a chisel and just kind of rattle it a little bit with a chisel and a hammer just to you know kind of break that bond free. Um, the other thing you're gonna do is hit it with some penetrating oil, you know, obviously around the around the snap ring to try and you know again break that bond with the rust. Um, ultimately, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an air hammer to do all that, you know, rattle it with the air hammer. What I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and make this thing spin in the groove. And typically when they start to spin in the groove, you can get them out with a pair of uh, snap ring pliers. But if they're frozen in place and you can't get them to turn, snap ring pliers won't work either. Um, you really gotta get it free and gotta get it moving to be able to get it out of there. See, a little bit of vibration, it'll start to pop out of there. Now that I got half of it out of there and I have a new snap ring, I'm just gonna get a screwdriver behind it and just pry that sucker out of there. 
Um, it's a lot easier than you know trying to fight with it and get the other half free. Now depending on the type of vehicle you're dealing with, there may be one more component that you have to remove and that is the wheel speed sensor up here, like one, two o'clock up here. Um, what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try something I've never done before. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and press this bearing out without taking out the wheel speed sensor because this car, this car is so rusty that this wheel speed sensor isn't gonna come out of that hole. The wheel speed sensor is stuck into a hole in the side of the, the knuckle and what happens is the, the holes rust up, they get smaller and pinch the sensor and then you'll never get the old sensor out without basically breaking it. So what I'm gonna try and do is uh, change this bearing without taking the sensor out. Will it work? Maybe. If it doesn't, whatever, either way, I'm gonna break the sensor, right? So I might as well give it a shot. Okay, so this is the press tool that we're gonna use. Um, like I said, I'll link it in the description if you guys wanna check it out. I'm gonna take you guys through how to set up the tool, how to make this thing work, and how to get it to do what you need it to do. So, first thing is first. What you need to do, obviously get out your bolt, get out your nut, and then what you're gonna do is you need to find the right size cup to go on the outside of the car, and the bearing is gonna go inside of this. So you need to figure out what outer sleeve fits the knuckle on the car. So to do that, just take this thing over to the car. And you notice that one fits pretty nice. So the, you know the bearing is gonna pass through the center of it. It sits nice and square on the hub. So this is the sleeve we're gonna use. So we need to assemble the press tool around this sleeve and the plate that fits the bearing. So we need this sleeve. The next thing we need to, need to figure out is which one of these backing plates that we're gonna use. Um, this one right here in particular fits this bearing perfectly. So if you look, there is a high spot in the center of that bearing that fits right inside of the new bearing and it also fits obviously the old bearing. But the nice thing is that step in it keeps the cup from sliding around left to right. If I flip this around, you can see this thing will go all over the place. That thing fits just like it's supposed to. Now the nice thing is, if you look at the back side where the ABS uh, wheel speed sensor is, there's enough room there that I should be able to press this out without taking out the wheel speed sensor, hopefully. At least that's the plan. So I need this piece, I need this piece. Now, the way this thing works is you're gonna take this flat plate, put it on this cup, then you're gonna take your bolt. Put your bolt through both pieces. The way this, the way this system works, the bearing sits in here, the flat plate goes on the back, and then all you do is you tighten up the nut on the back side, and all that does is pushes the bearing into the cup, pushes it right out of the knuckle. That's all there is to this thing. Um, works really well, I've used this thing quite a bit, and I've never had any problem with it. So I'm gonna assemble this over on the car. I will bring you guys back in a second. So I've got the tool assembled on the car. And all I'm gonna do is turn the bolt with a socket, hold the nut with a wrench, and it's gonna pull this back plate in toward the front. And if you look at the wheel speed sensor in there, I'm just clearing the top of it. So I may be able to get away with changing this thing without changing that wheel speed sensor, which would be spectacular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold the nut, turn the bolt, and then that bearing will end up in that cup. So as far as the sockets and the wrenches that you're gonna need with this tool, um, the socket and the wrench are both inch and a quarter. So obviously you're gonna need some pretty large, you know, sockets and wrenches to be able to use this thing. 
The other thing is, yes, you can do this by hand. Um, I'm just using an impact because it's so much quicker and I have one. Um, but you, if you don't have impact tools, yes, you can do this with a ratchet and a wrench. It's just going to take you longer to do it. And you're going to, you know, use a lot more effort than what I will, you know, pulling the trigger on an impact. So if you don't have air tools, it's not a big deal. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. Now, as far as pressing the, the bearing out, the biggest thing you need to uh, concentrate on is you need to make sure that the bolt is straight. So you don't want that bolt getting cocked and put on an angle and binding that bearing in the, in the knuckle. You want it to come out nice and straight and you want the new one to go in nice and straight. So off camera, what I did was I went in here with a pick and just cleaned out the snap ring groove cleaned out the you know the back edge made sure that there was no rust or debris on that on that hard edge where that bearing seats against when it's all the way in um, you just want to make sure the knuckles nice and cleaned out there's no rust flakes or any of that sort of stuff inside here so we can go ahead and press the new bearing in so getting ready to go back together a couple notes the bearing depending on the kind of car you're working on it may have a magnetic strip on the back side of the bearing. That needs to go toward the wheel speed sensor. So in my case, it's gonna to go toward the inside of the car. The outside of the car has a traditional lip seal on it. Um, some of the bearings you'll come across, there'll just be a lip seal on both sides and it won't matter which way it goes in. In this case, it does matter which way it goes in. If I put it in backwards, the wheel speed sensor won't read right and I'll have ABS code. So. Make sure you get this thing in in the correct orientation if you have to. So this is the setup that we're gonna to use to push the bearing into the knuckle. So I have a slightly larger uh, flat plate on this side. And then on the back side, I have the smaller of the two stepped plates. And that fits real nice against the, you know, the inside of the knuckle there. So if you use the other plate, you know, in my situation, it was it was just physically too big and it was getting up into, you know, the taper up here and it wasn't holding this this uh, bolt straight. So you got to be certain when you're doing this that you're keeping everything straight so that, you know, that bearing isn't going in there on an angle. So pressing the hub in is basically the exact same thing as pressing the hub out. Um, you're just using some slightly different adapters, but... Like I said, the biggest thing you need to remember is that you're going, the bearing is going in straight. So if it's not, if it just starts to go in, you see it, you know, being cockeyed a little bit, stop, reset, you know, start over, do what you need to do to get this thing in there right the first time. Because generally these things don't hold up well to being pressed in and out three and four times. Okay, so our bearing's in. Next thing is going to be a snap ring. So I got a fresh one. There you go. One thing I will do with the snap rings is I'll just take a hammer and a punch, go around. Just make sure that snap ring's seated all the way back in that groove. So if you were going to reuse your old wheel hub, there is one additional step that you're gonna have to do. So this this piece right here is the inner race from the old bearing. You need to remove this off of the hub before you press this into the new bearing. There's a couple different ways you can go about doing this. Um, easiest way that I've found, now not everybody has this, I understand, which is why I kind of push the, you know, just replace it option because it's so cheap. You get a cutoff wheel, come in here and cut a slit in the, in the race and try and split it and you know get it off of here. Um, the other thing you can do is try and get a chisel along the edge between the inner race and the hub and try and move it out a little bit and then get a gear puller on it and try to pull it off. The easiest way to do it by far is gonna be heat. If you guys have access to a torch, heat up the outside of this uh, inner race right here and eventually you'll get it hot enough where it'll just basically fall off. Um, and those are kind of the, the three ways that you could go about removing this inner race, but at any rate, I'm just gonna replace the whole hub. So the last thing we gotta do as far as the bearing is concerned is 
you know, put in the hub. Now, I'm just gonna put a new hub on this thing. Like I said earlier in the video, they're real cheap um, for most applications, but one thing you gotta check with the hub, because I've been burned, is you gotta make sure that the splines and the hub will go onto the splines of the, of the uh, CV shaft. I've pressed these in before, got everything back together, went to slide the CV shaft into the hub, and it would not go. Um, it completely screwed me. I had to take it all back apart, get another hub, get another bearing, do the whole job basically over again. So take your time right now, make sure the hub fits, make sure it's supposed to go on there the way it's supposed to go on there if you're replacing the hub like I am. So taking a look at the setup that I'm using to push the hub back in on the outside, I'm just using the bolt and the washer on the inside. I have a small plate supporting the inner race of the bearing and then the washer and then the nut. So at this point, we're ready to pretty much reassemble the vehicle. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put the CV shaft in the hub, put the axle nut on, tighten up the axle nut, put the rotor on, put the caliper and the bracket back on, and then finally throw the wheel and tire back on the car. Um, you know, obviously every application is a little bit different how they're gonna come apart and go back together. But as far as pressing out these bearings, um, the way it's gonna work is all pretty much the exact same way. So that is how you change a press-in style wheel bearing without a press. Um, down in the description, I'll put a link to the tools that I use, the press kit, as well as the slide hammer and the hub adapter, as well as um, you know the snap ring pliers and maybe some of the other stuff that I used in the video. Um, but yeah, as always guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you wanna see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.